Hi, I want to talk about uh, immediately obeying the Lord uh, when the Holy Spirit is stirring in you or prompting you to do something, say something, act on His leading. Now, I'm going to give a testimony of something that happened a few hours ago uh, to make my point. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, uh, because this idea, this thought of immediately obeying came to my head because of the situation, the testimony I'm going to give you. All right, and I'm going to I'm going to use uh, Acts 22:18 as one example of scripture where uh, the Lord is speaking to Paul in a in a vision, I believe it was, and he says to Paul, "Quick, immediately." leave Jerusalem because the people here will not accept your testimony about me okay now uh, immediately a lot of times we see uh, you know uh, immediately in the scripture like if you do a, a word search it from with the word immediately you'll find it's interesting a any word search is interesting because it, it shows the emphasis and it makes a very valid point now uh, with that scripture in Acts 22, 18, what if Paul didn't immediately obey? Now, I am not going to, I don't think for a second that he would have died, but I certainly do believe that there would have been consequences, all right? Like perhaps increased persecution, and he already went through enough persecution, he didn't need any anymore, <laughs> you know? And, uh, I, but in the context of this teaching video, I'm going to use it in the sense that uh, of not immediately obeying, we end up missing opportunities. All right. Now, uh, it just as a side note, when you do a word search with the word immediately, and I use the NIV because the NIV in this that particular scripture uses the word immediately. Uh, that word is not used uh, in, in all uh, translations, or, or no, I can't say that because I didn't check all translations, but, but uh, uh, it, just as a side note, you'll see also when healing situations, how immediately, when Jesus was healing people, immediately their eyes were open or whatever, or pain left or whatever. And uh, I think, I think uh, re reviewing those scriptures will help you. If you're a healing minister and you operate in the power of God and you're not getting immediate results with, you know, I believe, I believe meditating on those scripture verses will help you to get quicker results, immediate results, instead of having delayed healings. So, and that's just a side note. So anyway, um, immediately responding is important. Now, when I, today when I was in the supermarket, I was in the ShopRite supermarket in, excuse me, in Lakewood, on Route 9 South in Lakewood, and I was walking around getting a few items, and, and I'm standing I'm standing looking at looking at the orange juice because I wanted to buy orange juice and, and I was looking for the right one because I, I don't like pulp, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and next to me, it, let's say the wall is right in front of me, like I'm look, talking to you guys, the wall of the, the different orange juices and all juices, blah, 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 and uh, next to, the, to me, there's, it's on the corner of the, it's in the corner of the supermarket and then next to me there's these double doors where the work is coming in and out of, you know, the swinging doors, and uh, and I'm looking at the orange juice, and, and, and immediately this guy comes out, a worker comes out of these double doors with, uh, with a flat cart bed, and immediately I, fe I felt the stirring of the Holy Spirit's power. And I knew immediately, <laughs> I want to like, drive me crazy using the word immediately. Um, I knew immediately that God wanted to minister to this guy. He, and I didn't, even, I didn't even see him. He, he just, he came out and walked behind me the moment he came out of the doors because I was like maybe three feet away from the doors three or four feet away from the doors you know and the, the moment he came out I felt the stirring of the Holy Spirit's power in me and I knew it was related to him because he's the one that triggered it <laughs> you know there was nobody else around <laughs> you know so like so I turned around and I saw him I saw him going by and then I followed after him and it only took me three or four steps to catch up to him because I was reacting immediately. <laughs> you know, so I go up to him and uh, I stop him. I say, can I, I would like to talk to you for a second. You know, and uh, it, he, he stopped and, and 
I saw that he was a Christian. He, he had a lot of peace on his face. Very humble young man. His name is Carlos. All right, and uh, I said to him, "I'm a I'm a minister, you know, and I can tell when I'm near somebody that pain in their body. You and because when you came out that when you came out those doors right there, I was looking at the orange juice, and I and I immediately felt the power of God, knowing that He wanted to minister to you. And you have pain in your back and in your shoulder, I believe." And he said, yeah, I do have pain, but it's in my back and my knee. It was halfway right there. <laughs> and uh, he said, all right, well, I believe the Lord wants to heal you of that. And, and I just prayed for him. Usually I'll say, you, you want me to pray for you for that? But I didn't for this. I just, you know, I don't always say, do you want me to pray? But I usually ask because I like to get somebody to say, yes, you know, pray for me. That's like faith. You know, but I knew, he was such a humble young Christian, and I knew he was, and that I just prayed. I said, I'm going to pray for you. So I prayed. I, 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 I spoke the pain and left. All right, and I said a couple other things with him, to him, you know, talked to him for a little bit more, and then I left. I went on my way, continued shopping. You know, the pain left him. He felt great. He was amazed at it. He was really, you know, happy and surprised, like many people are. And then, and then I felt as if I wanted to talk to him some more. So, so I started uh, like five minutes later. I was looking for him again in the supermarket, and I saw him. So I went up to him and I said, "Hey, how you doing, Carlos?" He goes, "I feel good." He was very soft-spoken too. So I feel really good, you know, and there's no, no pain, no pain in his back or his knee, it was gone. Uh, but I felt like, I felt like more needed to be done there, plus I needed, I felt like I needed to, like, disciple him, alright? And so, so I said to him, uh, how did you get that pain? And he said, I got, I was, uh, I had ACL trouble, my knee here, you know, and, uh, and I operated on, and, and, and then I, I had, uh, a lot of narcotics, they were giving me narcotic painkillers, and as soon as he said that, I was uh, immediately <laughs> thinking, okay, there's an unclean spirit involved here because narcotics, you know, uh, uh, you know, I believe there's plenty of drugs that are okay, but there are many of them that are not, all right? Narcotics are very strong. I believe that narcotics are gateways. Certain narcotics are gateways, you know, mind, mind gateways. You're relinquishing control of your mind, you know, and it's like it's like you're at, you're like a zombie, you know. We've all heard of the zombie apocalypse, right? I believe that drugs do these. That people walk around like zombies, you know, and uh, so like they're mind gateways, and and for unclean spirits to come in, and now the the thing, and and I knew this was the case because this he's he's a he's a humble young man. He's young. He's humble. Very peaceful. All right, and he loves the Lord. And yet, but because of lack of knowledge, because of a lack of knowledge, the devil was getting away with something that he didn't need, that didn't need to be going on. And so, even though the pain left, I felt as if more needed to be done there. You know, when I told him, you know, after he explained that to me, I said, you know, you know, it, you know, it's like even with hard narcotic drugs, the pain it didn't heal you. You know, it's a spiritual matter. There's an unclean spirit. There's a spirit of addiction, a spirit of pain, whatever there. And he was like, he was intrigued by that. And so I prayed for him again cast that out and sure enough I got the classic reaction I felt something lifting off of me you know and I know it's when, when, when somebody says that and I didn't suggest it I didn't say did you feel something lifting off of you I said I said to him after I did I said all right now what's going on he said I felt as if a weight lifted that's what he said he used the words I felt as if a weight lifted off of me you know and that's just that's classic you know that that's like evidence that that was the case and, and and he felt more free and lighter, of course, you know. So, so I got the opportunity to explain to him, you, you know, even though his mo and his mom is a God-fearing woman, his mom, you know, she God-fearing, pray for him. She prayed for him to be healed for several years, and he wasn't healed. And it's like it makes such a good point that even though his mom is God-fearing and prayed, she, you know, because of a lack of knowledge, she was probably asking God to heal, you know. Now instead of making a command, instead of commanding healing and speaking with authority, the authority that's been given to the believer in Christ. You know, Jesus lives in us, you know, when you believe in Jesus, he lives in you. He kicked the devil's rear end. The devil's done, all right? He gets, the devil gets away with stuff because people invite him into their lives, all right? So, but, uh, but uh, it's a lack of knowledge. It's like, you know, so she, you know, it's okay to like ask God to heal somebody, but as long as that's not 
the the normal way in which you're operating is if you understand authority. I mean, I'm not, that's not a real big problem. But if you don't understand authority, you don't know who you are in Christ, and you're constantly praying that way, Lord, Lord, please heal, Lord, please, you know, Lord, heal. It's it's the Lord knows that you don't understand the victory you have over the enemy and the authority that's in you, and so it doesn't work. And so there was a lack of knowledge there, and so so uh, I'll, I want to get back. I want to finish up with making the point about immediately and that. And that immediately obeying the Lord. All right. Now, if I didn't, if I, after recognizing the stirring of the Holy Spirit's power in me, if I didn't immediately obey, how much longer would this young man Carlos have been going through life as a humble Christian man? How much longer would he be going through life with this pain? All right. So that's a very major point right there. It's like we miss opportunities, and I've missed opportunities myself, but. But we want to we want to obey the Lord immediately and not doubt. You know, a lot of Christians, I believe, will doubt. And I've done this myself. We're like, like, oh, do I want to talk to that person? Uh, nah, I'm not gonna. You know, and so we miss those opportunities, and then people continue to go on in captivity. You know, being captive to the wiles of the devil when it doesn't need to be. You know, so so not only was he set free, he was also educated. You know. Uh, and to understand his identity more. So, praise God. I'm looking forward to seeing him again because I know where he works. <laughs> you know, so so uh, it was just an awesome situation. So I want to encourage you to, to uh, do, a word, do a word search with the word immediately. It's really cool when you see that. And, uh, and, and also to be, be always, make, you know, be available to the Lord and be a, immediately obey him because there are consequences when you don't either for you or somebody else. Amen?